So you got a resin 3D printer and you're wondering, Grant, what the hell do I do with it? What are supports and why do they matter? Well, you probably clicked the video for that exact reason. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the 3D Musketeers YouTube channel. If you're new here, make sure you get subscribed and leave a like. We'd appreciate the support. We're going to talk all about support material for resin 3D printing and why it matters and why it is such a big deal. Coming next week, and we'll card to it when it's available, will be our entire theory on resin supports and how to do them better. But to do them better, we need to first understand them. Let's get into it. What we have here are some jewelry models. We know that a lot of people are buying resin printers for custom jewelry, and this is actually a customer of ours. I've Rachel raid some of these parts already. These are some older parts that we have for them with supports. These are fully cured. It's fine. But I do want to talk about the support material because this is something that has plagued us on these parts for a long time. If you notice, these parts have a ton of support material. The ones here, they don't have a lot of support material. We're going to get into that in the next video, but I want to talk about why support matters. Resin 3D printing is a style normally on the affordable side of masked stereolithography. It is an LCD screen with a UV light source under it and then the vat of liquid above the LCD. The LCD screen masks away pixels, allowing that UV light to come through that then cures that photosensitive resin, which hopefully sticks to your build plate and then is pulled out of your vat. This process is amazing. And the fact that these printers are as low as $200 or less is astounding to me. We're actually going to be using a very common size. This is for an Elegoo Mars, but particularly for small parts. And we're looking at you, the wargaming community. We're looking at you, the custom jewelry community, and the people that really want to get the most out of their resin prints. Not just I want perfectly smooth pieces, but I also don't want to sit there for hours with a pair of side cutters trying to cut all the little bits of support material off and then have to fish them off the floor when they end up flying into a low earth orbit. So how do we solve this problem? Well, the first thing is to understand the supports themselves. Unlike FDM, it is normal that a resin 3D print will require supports. There are plenty of cases, like the piece that's printing behind me, that was Tuesday's time lapse. That part needed no supports. In resin, it absolutely would because otherwise it would be a big suction cup. You'd have to put it on its side. We can take a look at this, but first, let's look at rings. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the support material that we've generated here. We are using Lychee Slicer 3, which is 3.6.2. Let's start with the Magic Wand tool, I think. I think the Magic Wand tool is a good one to start with. We're going to do auto orientation, auto supports, optimize brace. We'll turn off the raft for now, and we're going to use the medium setting. Now, for whatever it might be worth, our medium setting is not stock. You can see it right here. You're welcome. Let's go ahead and click I'm feeling lucky and let it do what it thinks is best. Now, while it's thinking, I do want to point out that we are using Lychee Slicer Pro. This is the paid version of Lychee Slicer. We'll link to Lychee Slicer's website down below so you guys can go see the differences. But honestly, it's not that expensive. And realistically, it makes sense if you are going to be someone that's going to do this stuff often. We're going to redo the magic wand because I have a support set to Ultra, but this can get you guys an idea of what this looks like. We can see what Ultra looks like. Let's see what normal looks like. We're going to go, I'm feeling lucky once again. It's probably going to mess with the orientation. We can see it's not bad. It's not bad at all, but it's a lot more than this. Full disclosure, I have not printed these yet, and I don't know if they're going to print, but we did just do a very large resin print, and those pieces succeeded with less support than this. Is this necessary? The answer is no. We're going to talk about why it's not necessary in an upcoming video, so make sure you guys get subscribed. It's going to be coming next week weak but supports in some instances i'd rather have too much than not enough you can go through and clip away the supports 
it's not my preferred method of doing it, and I know it's not anybody else's preferred method, but this is literally set and forget levels of support. And generally speaking, while I find Lychee Slicer to be a little overzealous on the supports, I'd rather give us too much than end up having to peel parts off of our FEP vat at the bottom of the printer. But for those that don't know, resin printers actually print upside down. Unfortunately, Lychee Slicer doesn't let you actually show that, but we can do this in editing. Imagine this is flipped upside down. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. And what occurs here is that from the bottom, it prints here and goes down. So you're sticking parts to the bottom of the build plate. Now, Grant, why don't you just stick these flat onto the build plate itself? Like, why, why don't you just take this part here? We're going to rotate on plate. We're going to stick that surface on the plate. Why don't you just do that, Grant? And I would say you, you absolutely could. There's actually no reason why you wouldn't do that. Now, you could print this part on its side. And quite frankly, this one particularly might work. But unlike FDM printers, resin printers need to make sure that your part is very, very, very well stuck to that build plate. If it's not, it's going to stick to the FEP. When you print resin, it has a tendency to rip from the FEP. It's actually why the Prusa SL1S is able to be so darn fast because the bed on the SL1S is able to tilt. On these more affordable resin printers that are one-tenth of the cost or less, they don't do that. So it has to physically rip the part away. What this means is that your first couple of layers are not all that good because they're overexposed. You might end up chipping pieces of it, so you got to be careful when you're doing it that way. And so putting a ring like this where you need extreme precision, extreme accuracy, highest detail possible, and the part is very fragile, stuck to the build plate will not work. If you have a flex plate, you might be able to get away with it, but chances are you don't. If you guys do want to see a flex plate rundown for resin 3D printers, let us know down in those comments. It is something that we've wanted to do, but it is going to take a lot of effort. And when I say effort, I also mean money to do that video. Speaking of money, if you do want to help support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers. And we have YouTube channel memberships where you can support us for very little every single month. The money does go to help making these videos better, more efficient, and hopefully with nicer B-roll. We're working on that, I promise. But a ring like this, we don't want to do that. I've tried it before. While you do get a good print, you're going to have a massive elephant's foot. And while you can look at doing some form of elephant's foot compensation, whether it's in the initial design or it's in the slicer software itself, we found that to not be as reliable as we would like. So what do you do? You support it. Now, generally speaking, you want your part to be at least five millimeters from the build plate. You can go higher up. It's not really going to hurt anything. It's just going to increase your print time. If you didn't know, for resin 3D printers, the big thing that affects speed and time is not just your exposure, but it is the height of your build. For most resin 3D printers, and that is mass stereolithography, ones that use screens or a DLP process, the layers are fully exposed at the same time. So the only variance for how long something takes as long as your exposure time is the same, is the Z height of the print itself. The taller your print, the longer it's going to take. And if we have one ring that is taller than all the others, the print will take the amount of time for the tallest ring. We could do one set of these, two sets of these, and I believe we can fit up to four sets, and it's going to take the exact same amount of time as it would to print just one ring. So when you're doing resin printing for a business, Getting them nice and close is something that you want to do. Now, generally speaking, you're going to want to angle your parts back a little bit. This reduces the overall cross-sectional area that you have when you're printing. Less cross-sectional area, less peel force, less chance of your part breaking off the build plate and getting stuck to the FEP film. You also need to make sure that at all areas of contact, you have it well supported. Does Lychee Slicer need to have support up here? I personally don't think so. 
for rings, you can generally get away with not having any support there. As long as your model has enough meat to it and enough thickness to it that it can survive that peel force, you'll be okay. But sometimes we do recommend adding some interior support. This is best if you're working on a mini. Something where if it is tilted back some, it's totally fine. You don't care. You're going to end up sanding and painting it anyways. But we care about our contact distance, and we also care about how deep that goes. Now, the settings that you see here are actually from my buddy, Charo Zuck. We'll link to his Twitter down below. He goes by Idle Hams and actually does all of the resin 3D printing supports for Fotus Mint and a few other large creators that you guys might know. But Fotus is the one that we show off the most. We're trying to get him to be a podcast guest, by the way. So if you know Fotus, go bug him. We want him to be a podcast guest. <laughs> I love you, Fotus. But Charo does such a great job at this and actually taught some of us in Discord for Fotus Mint a couple of weeks ago. And we picked that up. Some of his tips are right down there. Just the tips, mind you. But that's coming in a future video. He believes that having a smaller contact distance, but having a larger support overall, ends up with a model that tends to just fall off of the supports when you're peeling it, rather than something you have to rip it off. To give you an idea, let me break one of these off. I have the individual piece, I just cracked it off of the others. Let's look at actually pulling this off. There we go. We can also see that the surface finish here is not great. Let's take a look. So lots of little dots, lots of little really scars and zits that are going to be a massive problem if you're casting this into a precious metal. You could also hear how much that was really stuck on there. That's not good. For whatever it might be worth, this is fully cured. So it's not exactly a good example because normally you would do your removal of supports before you fully cure your models. In some cases though, for jewelry, you might choose to leave the support material on and use it as a sprue for casting. So keep that in mind when you're designing your parts. But the resin itself needs to be fully supported. It's not like FDM where you can bridge. Resin does not do that very well. You can actually create suction forces. I wanna show a print. So let's save this one and let's open a new one real quick. I will say the one pet peeve of mine with Lychee Slicer is that I can't have multiple instances open at once. Uh, please, please fix that. Cause like as a business, I, I really want to have more than one open because I don't want to have to close one. Then, oh, yeah, really wish I could just very quickly jump through them. But that's the magic of editing. Thanks, Andrew. Here we have a recent print that we completed. We actually have some pendants that we did for a client that had a less than 24 hour turnaround time. These pendants are very, very tiny. To give you an idea, this is the part still on supports. And this is the part when it's been removed. Now, unfortunately, there's some really fine detail on this that resin printing, even with its high detail, wasn't great. But you can see that you don't need a ton of support to make things work. What we're looking at next to it are some minis that we recently printed. Now, this was done separately before I learned the trick for resin. But we can see that tilting things back a little bit, putting them at an angle, and reducing cross-sectional area is important. For Harley here, we opted to lay her down more than we normally would. The reason for this was to reduce the print time. She was considerably larger than anything else in that build, therefore, it didn't just want to keep one printing for no valid reason other than one model, and then two, also damaging the screens. For those that don't know, the screens on resin printers are a consumable product. They don't last forever. More than likely, you're just gonna break one before it breaks itself. Not that I would know, I definitely don't have an Elegoo Mars down here on the floor next to me that I dropped a build plate on and cracked the screen as well as cracked the FEP and made a mess everywhere. Nope, wouldn't know what that's like would not know what that is like. And especially the monochromatic screens, the mono screens, they are very, very fragile. So you do need to be careful about dropping things in there. I learned the hard way, don't drop your build plates into your printers, but it's a thing, it happens to everybody. But when you can reduce that cross-sectional area, if you come into the supports, and for those wondering, the drunken plumber here, he is red because he does have some flipped vertices and there's one small hole. 
I don't have Lychee Slicer connected to a fixing software, so it's not fixed. This is... We're not printing this actual build. And honestly, he printed fine. But you can see we look at reducing cross-sectional area. Hardly, well, we should have honestly spent the extra print time. I never did get a good print of Harley Quinn like this, because you can see that is a massive amount of area touching the actual FEP sheet. And yes, there is a fair bit of base for her. There's really not enough. She's incredibly high detail. Okay, so you do got to be careful about that as well. Understanding where detail is required and where it isn't is great. And especially on minis, if you tilt them back, so you're not putting any support on their face or on their hands where you can avoid it, that means a lot of those scarring and issues that might come up from not having the best supports are completely invalidated because you're not gonna see it anyways. But making sure that you have really good contact distances, making sure that your diameters, your tip diameters, and your tip length as well is how far it penetrates into the model is all very, very important. If you guys wanna see a video specifically on how we determined the best settings for resin printing, let me know. You can definitely see that we've gone through some changes. We have this one, which has very, very big contact tips, where this one here is much, much smaller, all the way to this one here, these pendants that use incredibly tiny supports as well. Resin printing is great. And you all can be proud of me. I've made it basically the whole video without saying resin is toxic. But I do need to, of course, remind you guys that it is. Leave a comment down below. What resin printer do you have? What resin are you using? We are primarily Soraya Tech here. We use a lot of their fast gray. Actually, these parts are fast gray. And the rings that we showed earlier are going to be made out of Soraya Tech cast. So Soraya Tech, if you're listening, sponsorship. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. And wear gloves because resin is toxic. Have a good one. I will see you all in the next one. Oops, that's not my outro. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our patrons who are listed right next to us at the $5 tier and higher. YouTube channel memberships are now also a thing, so if you want to support us that way, you can, and any YouTube channel membership gets you your name in those end credits. Right below me will be the series that we've done so far on resin 3D printing, and right next to that will be the awesome interview that we just did with Willow Creative, one of the most amazing cosplayers out there. They do beautiful work. Some of it is resin, but a lot of it is FDM. You gotta watch it, if you're, especially if you're looking to get into high-end 3D printing. That's one you're not going to want to miss. I will see you guys down in those comments. Don't forget to leave a like. Take care.